Cybersecurity and automation and scripting, can they go together? Well, of course they can. Hey, what's up guys, it's Grant here. Today I want to do a project I have been postponing for a couple of months now, and that is developing some Python scripts to automate cybersecurity learning and information. So the basic premise behind this little project is to create a couple of scripts which allow me to receive feats of information of regarding cybersecurity so that I don't have to go to a website, you know, and go through that whole task of putting in the URL. I can just run the script and be cool. Sometimes you just need to make things more complex than they are to show your hacker, inner hacker skills. I'm just joking, I'm just joking. Really, this is just a little mini project to continue to advance the skills uh, of Python. So in this, we are going to be creating three different scripts that I have come up with and let me go ahead and show you what they are. All right, so here in front of me, I have my overview document, and I'm gonna be creating three different scripts with different levels of uh, expertise, I guess. Well, complexity. The first script is going to be generating a random password. Now, you may be wondering, why would I ever do this? Of course, you have a password manager, and in addition, you just go to a website and then click generate random password, and there you go. Well, of course you have to show off your scripting capabilities. I'm just joking. Really, it's all about just creating a script which would create a random password. Now, the biggest thing to keep in mind is to make sure that when this password is created, it is generated in a cryptographically secure way because when it comes to Python and handling data and more so generating data, we need to make sure that this is cryptographically secure in the background so that no one could tamper just in case. Now, script two is automating cybersecurity news feeds. So instead of going to a URL like you could, you know, usually do, uh, I'm gonna go ahead and get a couple of my favorite security news websites. And I'm gonna try using the RSS feeds. For those of you who don't know, RSS feeds are uh, basically ways that you can receive updated information through websites and news websites like, you know, security news websites have RSS feeds so you can take a look at that. So I'm gonna look at the RSS feed module of feed parser that I've looked briefly into. And then the last script is a CVE list generator. So as CVEs continue to get disclosed each and every week, there's a lot of them being disclosed. What I want to do is go ahead and populate a list of CVEs running the script, which would allow me to either uh, just have the CVE name and maybe the, the title of the name, or also include a little description of what is going on within this particular CVE so that I don't have to go to the website. With all this behind us, let's go ahead and get started by creating and generating a random password script. All right, so here in front of me, I have created a script one, which was to create or generate that random password. So moving into our screen here, as you can see, I just went ahead and imported two libraries, which I found online, the secrets and string library. And from this, I'm able to create a new password, which is cryptographically secure so that the string with characters and digits uh, is generated in a secure fashion. Uh, so basically all you had to do here is use a couple of the little methods involved within the secrets and string libraries. So if we were to run this using the CMD on Windows, I know, damn Windows, but if you were to do this, go ahead and use Python, uh, and then we do generate password Y. We can go ahead and enter the number of digits we want to create, and in this case, let's just say 32, and there we go. So our password is generated, and we have the output here. Awesome, pretty easy script. So the next script is the automating of news feeds. Let's go ahead and try getting that started. While I'm developing this script, uh, you may have noticed in the back of some of my shots something new, and that is 
a new table or desk. The team over at FlexiSpot was kind enough to send one over to me. Now, I already actually have a FlexiSpot desk that I bought over a year ago, and I've been very impressed with the desk. This is one of them that you put on top of a desk or table. The team over at FlexiSpot was kind enough to send me over their full electronic desk, which is able to move fully up and down on its own. A lot of you have been wondering where I get my stand-up desk from, and it is from FlexiSpot. It was really easy to install. As you know, I'm all about increasing and maximizing my productivity. This is why I even bought a standing desk in the first place. So if you guys are interested, you can get a 15% off on the desk that I was sent from FlexiSpot. Thank you to the team for sending this table over to me. Now back to scripting. M&Ms are very good programmer food or something like that. They're actually not They're really bad for you. All right, so I'm finished with my next script, the security news script. And in this case, what I did was I went ahead and used the feed parser and web browser modules, which allowed me to parse through the RSS feeds of various websites by collecting their URLs to their corresponding RSS feed lo lo location. After I collected a few of the URLs, I went ahead and parsed through each of the URL or SSR feeds, individual SSR feeds, by collecting the title in the website link. And I have displayed the first five or the most recent five articles based off of the website that you choose. And from that, you can then choose the link of the website that you want to open, the link of the article. Let's go ahead and test this out. Here I have the path open, and if I go ahead and do Python, followed by my cybersecurity news script. As you can see, I have three websites that are listed here. You can add more websites if you want to. So in this case, I'm just gonna choose Threat Post as the uh, website that I want to look for. And then here, it's gonna come up with the first five or the most recent five articles within this RSS feed numbers here. So let's say I want to do defining security policies to manage remote insiders and click two. The web browser is going to open up here. Now we have it opened and there, there we go. The article is now open. So this is a very easy way to parse through some websites, get the articles that you think would be interesting to read and then quickly open them up every single time we want to run the script. So with this behind us, we have one more, which is producing that CVE list. And it's gonna be a similar process to this, except this time I'm gonna be working with JSON files. Let's go ahead and get it started. Goldfish are the healthier option when it comes to snacking. Just joking, that's a lame joke. All right, so I am finished with the third script. It didn't take me as long as I thought it would. I went ahead and imported the request library, which will allow you to query for information when supplying for a URL. And then there is a .json function or method uh, within the request library, which allows you to convert and decode that information into a JSON file format. And for those of you who don't know, JSON is a raw data format uh, which allows you to query through and parse information. So in this case, what I did was I went ahead and went through each of the items within JSON and found the two keys, the dictionary keys which I was looking for, which included the ID as well as the summary for the CVEs. So if we want to go ahead and execute this, we can go ahead and supply Python followed by the CVE uh, list here. As you can see, it's going to populate the latest 30 CVEs, uh, which have been documented here, with a description. So when the next time I need to go look for, I don't know, a CVE, well, I guess the latest 30 CVEs, I can go through this program right here. All right, so this finishes the automation little mini project. Now, if you guys are interested, I do have a resource slash course coming out soon, and I know, I know, I've been saying this for like the last three months, but time flies. 
It's finished. It's going to come out the week of November 30th. So if you are interested in developing more scripts like this, and then there's going to be project ideas where you're going to develop the scripts on your own, as well as learning the foundations of Linux and networking, IT security. And I promise I'm not going to be like one of those guys who's going to be like, you know, you want to get into cybersecurity? Buy my course. <laughs> you know, I'm not like that. Those gurus, right? Guru? I don't know. Anyway, that's the resource that's coming out soon. Um, but yeah, until the next time, have a good day, guys.